si Sev Sarmenta, si Danny Francisco at natatawa na sila. Oh, so, <laughs> Negros versus Cebu. Cebu leading the series 3 to 1. It could end tonight. We'll find out from Sev and Danny over there in Cebu City. Thanks a lot, Bob and Chot. Akala mo hindi lumalabas sa TV, no? Kumakaway pa. And here we are with Danny Francisco. We welcome you to Game 5 of the Southern Conference Finals. Alam mo, Sev, ito tonight, I think this is the night no, for both teams. There are a lot of things going through the minds of the players of these two teams, but they've just got to think about today's game. Not anything else, not Saturday, yes. not even tomorrow. And the Cebu Gems lead 3-1. What is going on in their minds? Let's take a look. Gems is taking it 3-1 in the best of Southern Conference Finals. Back-to-back, -back, you know, didn't give me enough time to, you know, somehow relax. But uh, like I said, uh, I think it's just a matter of trying to motivate the boys. Or Ang laro talaga namin na uh, bumaba, no? yung intensity namin, especially sa third quarter. No? In the middle of the third quarter, bumaba yung uh, intensity na nag-collapse. We cannot be overconfident, no? because coming into this series, we were the underdogs. In this team, there's, there's no... There's no I, you know, it's purely teamwork, that's what I keep on telling them, you know, if we just keep on playing the way we, we play in practice, you know, with teamwork, I think nothing could go wrong. Nagkakaroon kami ng uh, misalignment sa mga poste namin, you know, at saka yung match-up, with regards sa uh, match-up, talagang nadihado kami sa match-up. We would like to end it here, but, you know, I cannot, I cannot say for sure unless only the guys could say whether they would like to end it here or not. Hanggang maibuhos namin, ibubuhos namin. Yung nalala, yung natitira namin, ibubuhos namin. We welcome you to the new Cebu City Coliseum, a place where the Cebu Gems have played nine home games and have won eight of them if you count all the eliminations, the semifinals, and the finals of the Southern Conference, and they've lost only once and that happened way back five months ago on April 1 when they lost to Dabao. The final score then was about 81 to 80. So it's been quite a time and the, the feeling here, they're looking forward. Actually, they just don't know if they're going to win the North if you talk about the Cebu Gems. But if you talk about the Slashers, they have other things in their mind. They want to go back to Bacolod. They want to steal one here, Seb. They want to bring it back down to Bacolod. And if they do bring it back down to, the ball, to Bacolod, itong Cebu will have a difficult time because they're going to be playing against a Bacolod hometown crowd, which is approximately the same in terms of the emotions running right now as we take a look at the Game 14 Cebu stats. We take a look at the starters of the Negro Slashers. The scoring weighs heavily on them, counting for 68 points as against only 17 for the bench. The Gems so far have balanced things out between their starters and their bench. They're getting a lot of points from their bench, and that's the reason why, by balancing it out, they can, they are able to help each other out, Seb, but saka nagkakaroon sila ng yung pag-rotate ng tao. Malaking bagay ito para sa Cebu Gems. And Danny, you and I have been here, you've been here for almost a week now, and we've been talking uh, about this game earlier today. It is so difficult to win in this building, but the Necro Slashers, I had lunch with them earlier, and they'd like to, as you mentioned, steal one and look forward, not look back at what's happened over the past week. That's true, Seb. In fact, I was with um, the Necro Slashers in Alaman sa hotel, and it seems that they're very loose. They came into this ball game. Actually, they came in very early to shoot around, and it seems that um, they only have one thing in mind, and that is to really make that necessary adjustments and to be able to win one here right now. Of course, and deny Cebu the chance of becoming the Southern World champions ayaw nilang pabagsakin ang mga lobo ngayong gabi and let's see the Cebu starters Cebu starting at center number 19 John Montalvo starting at power four number 2 Richard Kalia Go 
Lights, Kalichi and Dury, and she's the coaches, Mario Dury and Rio de Rico Carbonell. And we are Rio about Pinto. a few seconds away from getting game five going. Keep in mind, Zubu leading the series three games to one after losing the first game in Negros. They won three straight. They stole one in Negros, Danny. Yes, a uh, surprise starter for the Negros last year. Second single, Nathan. So I'm sure it's a good to has made the necessary changes. And it's up to the players to adjust. They are supposed to be playing here pressure free against the Cebu Gems. This crowd is just about ready to roar. Here we go. First touch of the ball belongs to the Negro Slashers. Danny, the Slashers have to play such a superlative game. They are so many odds stacked against them. You know, with that loss to the Cebu Gems in game number three, malaking bagay that they have to regroup right away. And I feel whoever starts off strong in this game will have a very big chance of winning it. Because sa una palamang you can already see the complexion of the game. O ano ita atak mo ng dalawang kopanan. Antiveros, ball game with Negros breaking the ice, two to nothing. Antiveros, ball batted from behind, nearly lost. Shot clock at five. Under the basket, no. And by the way, joining us for this coverage, completing the Cebu Quartet, Alex Santos and Bobby Yan. Bobby will report about the slashers, and we'll get to Alex Santos from time to time. He'll tell us about what's happening at the Cebu bench. Here's Ferriols, we're a minute into the fourth quarter, and Ferriols has all of the points of the game so far. So far, we cannot see any changes in the Negro Slashers offense. They're going down to John Ferriols. They know that John Ferriols can score the points. He's the most consistent slasher during this title series. Jams have won by an average of 11 points in the finals. It's a big win, uh, of course, was the last game wherein they won by 20 points. 105 to 85 was the count then. Third game was the closest at 95 90. Negros took the first by a whopping score of 104 to 82. Danny, this place is just about ready to burst <laughs> at the seams. It's the thousands outside the Cebu Coliseum. Coliseum. You know, they want to really cheer on their squad. At saka yung tao dito talagang they're really intent on just pushing the Cebu Gems into the championship. Frommel, whenever he plays well, usually Negros is off to a good game. But he also firing. The new one with a hand on it gets it, and the big men of Negros are doing the damage. The front line of Negros slashes the pinapakita nila ang katilang veteran moves. It's now six to one in favor of the Negros slashers, and it is very evident that itong Negros they want to go to their big men, they want to go to their veterans. No, and the support staff will just provide those added points. Six seconds remaining on the shot clock. That will go. Almonte. He has a new hairdo for today, Danny. <laughs> the color is green. I think the people in Cebu, Cebu rather, were requested to come in green for the game today. We see a lot of um, green and white balloons here. White Almonte hitting the jumper to ease the pressure of Don Don Ontiveros. Martel and Corkson scores. That foul will go against Rudy and Terina. I think we have a million bucks in our headset right now because I think they want to watch the game as well, Danny. Yeah, nothing that our technical staff cannot do with Mr. Ray Vigos at the helm. We have cleared right away the headset, huh? Requested graphic. 9.38 remaining, we're in the first quarter. Negros is off to a good start. This is what you have to do against the obstacles in front of you. You know, time again, we always talk about the fire in the eyes of these players. And it's important talaga the first few minutes because you can dictate the tempo of the match and continue on later on just to maintain their consistency. I talked to John Ferriols at lunch also. He said he's played here before. Uh, he knows the crowd of uh, Cebu. Good cut by Frama. Just a little too strong. Ferriols attacking the boards. Makes one. Makes one. Scores. Ferriols off to an amazing start with six points. 
But you know, when we talk about the intangibles, probably, Seb, we're going to talk about the overconfidence factor, which may set in. And this time, Coach Tonichi calls for an early timeout because they're way behind 12 to 3. Great start, but while we were doing that, Dondon Honteveros with his first salvo of the game, Danny making it a 14 5 count. However, itong si Hugnata, nakapasok na muli sa loob. Alam mo, the interior defense of the Gems, very, very suspect at the moment. Hindi katulad nung game 3 na nakita nila na yung mga galaw mula sa loob, nagkakaroon ng quick double teaming effort kagad. Alyao's attempt will not work. We're all hard at work. Alex, maagang nag-timeout ang Cebu, no? They fell behind early. Yes, Seb, totoo yan. Uh, alam mo, Seb, kanina pagsimula natin ang game, nagulat sila bakit hindi si Wellar ang first five kanina to do the point guard at si Erwin Pramong ginawang point guard. Ang kanilang gagawin sana, they have to harass itong si Maui Wellar pero wala si Maui Wellar, medyo nakagulo ka ng depensa at ang nakulang nila dito, hindi na nagulang depensa nitong dalawang malalaki nila, Jack Tanuan and also John Perios. Back to you, Seb. And of course, they talked about the remedies for that during the course of that time. But I think that was a surprise move on the part of uh, June Noel. By the way, I failed to mention that Michael Manigo has been inserted into the lineup. They're looking for a spark, the Cebu Gems. Sigurado yan, kasi they're down by nine points at sa itong Negros seems to know or have already checked anong adjustments na kailangan niya gawin. They're going down to Jack Tanuan. They're waiting for any cuts towards the middle. There it is. We're talking about it and that basket is taken care of by Hugnatan. Great now Hugnatan already with his second basket. Bobby Yan has a report from the Slashers corner. Yes, this is the best start of the Negro Slashers in three games here. Now this is the way they want it. They want their fast breaks. They're getting their bench support. Let's see how they can sustain this through the first half. Back to you, Seven Dan. Bobby Yan enjoying Cebu to the belt in his first trip here. When Mar the breakaway. Bang, bang, bang. We are seeing the different facets of the Negro Slashers offense. May fast break na sila. Marami silang nakukuha dun sa loob. At saka they're getting that rebounds. Whenever you get those defensive boards, it can touch up numerous fast breaks. At yun ang ginagawa ni Negros. May stimuli tayo. John Perios. A step ahead. One break, two breaks. All the way, baby. One work. Tip and one work. Rebound. Loose ball foul. With it, Reyes, the referee makes this call. Danny, you were so right when you mentioned that Negros would be playing into this game. Sand setting pressure and they were very loose as we take a look at this FedEx the World on Time fast break. And this is what the Negros team was wary of going into this game. Mike Manigo. In, uh, and there's a foul inside. That's going to be number one on Hugnaten and the Cebu Gems have quickly changed the complexion of their lineup. Don Chris Tan, Rob Wainwright, and saka si si Richard Callao. Mike Manigo, as we take a look at the rebounds in the Freeman, in one of the papers here, and written by Emmanuel Villaruel said, ang mga fans, isa sa magapatukang sa intensity sa tuwa, mga kalahan, sabi ko kayo magtrabaho. In other words, the crowd is their sixth teammate. We're seeing better ball rotation on the part of the Negro Slashers. Main run, now back! And listen to this crowd roar! Ito sabi natin, the quick changes made by the coach, and that's Coach Nietzsche Turi. They spell the difference here in this game. Let's look down by Lito. It's the cleanup, Wainwright did not start here, Daddy. The shot, long. Chance now for the Cebu Gems to inch it a bit closer. And one quick rebound, Perios. Hey, Perios is all business here, man. And a timeout requested by Negros. With a score standing at 18 to 10, 527 to go. This is the NBA on ABS-CBN. Sugbo at mga kaibigan natin saan mga kayo naroon na nag-enjoy sa NBA at saka sa Skyflex Skyflex nating lahat Per Yolts is at work 5 quick points by the Cebu Gems after being down by as much as 13 Chris Tan is at work Danny oh but throws it away there was a long pass by Chris Tan to Dondon Honduras take a look at the points in the paint the slashers with 14 
against the Gems Zero. And if you notice, the slashers in the early goings of this first quarter really going to work with John Ferriols and Jack Tanuan underneath. You know the reason why may happen itong Cebu na dumipensa is that every time they get it to Jack Tanuan or John Ferriols, nakakaroon ng quick double teaming and very quick ball movement on the part of the slashers working wonders for them. And that is exactly a good point because as Bravo nets it underneath, this is something that Negros did not do in the three games that they were defeated, did not do it all too well. Well, dito sa umpisa pa lamang masasabi ko na itong Negros slashers talaga naiintindihan nila na kanya-kanyang role to para sa isang kapuran. At ipinapakita nila yun, the confidence to pass it off to a teammate who can score. Bravo is fouled on the way up. Danny Cebu has a problem. They've been limited to one shot per trip and there's and nobody else inside boxing out. Yeah. Well, nobody even crashing the boards. You know that this Cebu Gems lineup is a, a smaller lineup in terms of fight than the Negro Slashers as we take. We just saw that foul by Chris Tan. Chris Tan with his first foul and the fourth on the Cebu Gems. Aaron Framo, his numbers on your screen. Big win earlier by Pampanga to tie up that particular series. Final score, I believe, was about 79-78. Ato Agustin again uh, proving to be uh, a big hero there. So that series is tied. Big question as to how that will turn out. Chris Tan with a push, called by Sheila Pitalia. That's going to be number two on Chris Tan. This is the aggressiveness of the Negro Slashers front line. The aggressiveness to even get the offensive boards. And pinapakita nila dito kasi lamang sila ng 11, 21 to 10. And it seems that the Gems suddenly are just surprised with the start of the Negro Slashers. It was like a firecracker then. Sinindihan, maitsinimitsa, pumuto, pumuto and Ferriols was the one at the firing end. But Og is on the line. One on one fails and Chris Dan nails the rebound. Mike Manigo. Spitfire. Shot clock at 11. Tonichi Ituri is livid. Medyo malam niya itong opensa nitong Cebu Gems. In fact, Dikit na dikit ito si Erwin Framo kay Don Don Honteveros. They know at this point na si Don Don Honteveros ang tanging scorer lamang ng Cebu Gems. You know what Cebu needs? A couple of fast breaks to get their adrenaline flowing, keep their confidence in the game. Here's Cardell. Outside he goes to Wallar. Cardell downstairs to the big man. Blackjack on the move. Outside back to Maui. Maui the flying fish on the move. The flying fish scores! I made a personal request today during lunch. I need two of those uh, funky lays lay layups of his during the course of the game. Magaling mag-identify ng double team ito si Jack Tanuan. Mike Manigo looking for Chris Tan. And Chris Tan trying to elude the defense. Scores inside. And the balloons go a fluttering in the background. But the gems are still down by 11 with three and a half remaining. We're still in the opening quarter. Cardell fires from three, just short. Rebound into the hands of Tan, who picks up his second rebound of the quarter. Checking that his third. Monteveros trying to create. It looks like John Cardell will pick up that foul. Which he acknowledges, Danny, his first of the game. And the third on the Slashers as a unit. You know, Sev, in game number four, itong si Don Don acted out as a decoy. He got his points. Yes. But every time they're going to go for that double, ang ginagawa ni Don Don, hinahanap niya yung mga open spots sa teammates. Yan ang ginagawa ng Negro Slashers niyan. Every time magkaka-double, hinahanap nila yung open man. So take a look at the turnover story. The Gems with five. The Slashers very careful with the leather. And illegal defense is now strong against the Slashers. If there's one ball, and Sheila Pitali is on the, on the ball, it's this one. Take a look. Makikita natin si Jack Tanuan. Matatawagan siya ng illegal defense dito kasi napakalayo niya sa kanyang tao no, in that region. Manigo against Wallar. That's going to be a great duel. The intended pass to Tan. The shot clock at 13. No need to rush actually. Wainwright on Corks. Can't get it to drop. And the rebound is picked up and a loose ball foul could be Rob Duwatu. Was one. just inserted into the lineup after two, two previous plays. Number one on Rob Duwatu. And Negros doing a very good job of boxing out on their men. 
And this will send Sion to the free throw line. Itong kupunan ng Cebu James. Maagang nalagay sa penalty situation. Kaya titira itong si Erwin Framo. 3-3 ba, Danny? Pero si Sion. Si Sion eh. Hala ko naman. Sa aga-aga naman yan. Brown trying to get into Sion's jersey. Maybe they have succeeded. However, the rebound, Sion fall away. No, and Duat snares the rebound. That's his first of the game. Duat dips it in. No siree. And Duat says, ah, ah, ah. Is there such a thing, Danny, as playing tense? Kung sa Tagalog na gigil. Alam mo, expected yan dito sa Cebu na tapusin na ng Cebu Gems yan. At, um, these are the extra energy no, na nararamdaman ng Cebu Gems. They've got to settle down because Negros playing better basketball even at the start. No? At makikita mo yun, they are anticipating every pass of the Cebu Gems. Parang pasampasa yung laro ano, dito sa first quarter. How about waiting for two days, Dan? What's it like to wait for a big game like this after winning last Sunday? Well, of course, on the minds of the Cebu Gems, they want to wrap it up. But on the minds of the Negros Slashers, Nakita natin that the starters were playing heavy minutes, so that two days of rest, I'm sure, it worked well for them. Ang ginawa nila, nagpahinga sila, they rested their tired legs. At saka, itong si Junoel, I'm sure, ginawa niya, in-adjust niya. At nanood to ng tape, sigurado ko, because they have viewing. So, ina-adjust niya whatever disadvantage that they may have. And magandang adjustment na naman ang gawa ni Coach Junoel. Sion, three attempts, still nothing. And Duat in charge of that rebound, that's number two. Ball game down to its uh, last, a mi last minute and 46 of its opening quarter. Sam Sarmenta, Danny Francisco, Alex Santos, and Bobby Young, your quartet here in Cebu. Follow up will not materialize. Oh, Duat, go! No! We had some very tense attempts. Kristan ends the madness. Yes. You know, that's a classic case of having a lot of nervous energy itong ginawa ni Rob Duan. <laughs> yes. Naipasok ni Cristan. Mabilis naman buhaba itong Negro Slashers. Jack the Ruan, baseline jumper. You cannot give him that kind of a shot. And Kirate was so apologetic about it. Alam mo, kagandahan rin dito kay Jack the Ruan. Napakasimple lang niya maglaro. No? Simple ng basketball, oh, no? At saka very relaxed. He is a veteran for the Negro Slashers squad. Duan with nine on the shot clock. Starts his move. Will there be enough time? Wayne Wright starts his grind. Jackson one on the shooting arm may have committed the foul. A very tentative movement on the part of the Cebu Jones. Yeah. 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 And I think, think Jackson the pro pro tapik sa braso yung kiliti ng konte pero na basa ng referee. And this was said Robert Wayne Wright to the free throw line. Sev, I was just about to say na itong Cebu Jones no at this point they cannot afford to be hesitant. Okay, because okay. Itong Negro Slashers will just jump on them like what they did at the start of this first quarter. 15 points, 46 seconds to go. That's a low scoring first quarter for the Cebu Gems. Why? They turned the ball over a lot of times and this was translated into points by the Negro Slashers. You know, lunch at the Nikkei Hotel was so sumptuous. They, in fact, sinigang na hipon and it was so sumptuous. But there was hardly any talking because the players, I could sense, we're thinking just about this moment. 35 seconds to go. A nine-point lead by the visiting Slackers. Willar with a running shot. Awkward and off. It won't drop. Girante has it. Girante trying to elbow his way out of trouble. Manigo snaps it over to Tan. We go downstairs to Wayne but I speak too soon. Bravo with a foul. Bravo with his first, but the fifth on the team. Sending... Krista to a one and one Who do you think will be the leader for the Cebu team here this afternoon or this evening for that matter, Danny? Well, in their previous games wherein the Cebu Gems won, ang ipinasok sa una, ito si Rudy and Tarina, no, to provide that better leadership. However, in this particular game, it seems that kalat sila ngayon. As we take a look at Mr. Philippe Luilier, the team owner of the Cebu Gems. Is Jean Henry and Be are they back? Be Jean Henry and Bayer are they back? Wala pa sila. They actually they're arriving this weekend. 
But I'm sure itong si John Henry, hindi nakakatulog ito. <laughs> <laughs> Kahit na malayo siya, iniisip pa rin niya ang kanyang koponan. Thank God for cellular phones, huh? And long distance calls, IDDs and that, like that. Things like that, that is. Final seconds. Oh, yes! Eight points by Ferrios. And named this first quarter as the Slashers and Ferrios. Dali lang yun. We shall be right back here in Cebu. This is a great one. Game number five with the Gems leading 3-1. Hoping to wrap it up today. Seven eighteen. We. Mommy, ano si Alex? Kung makain pa ako ng palabog dito, eh. bakit kailan introduce yan? Sige na nga. Alex, take it away. Yes, sir. Balamo. Um, galit na galit na talaga dito si Coach Sunichi Turi. Sabi niya sa kanyang mga players, well, pahihirapan talaga tayo ng Negro Slashers. Hindi natin execute properly itong ating defensa. Isa lamang itong sinasabi niya na para dito sa Cebu Gems. Sabi niya, kung mag double team tayo, never. Never done outside the posting area. Wag don sa post area, dahil nakukunan tayo ng puntos yan. So back to you, sir. Thanks a lot, Alex. Cut inside. Nani Cebu off to a very slow, sluggish start, and suddenly they caught fire towards the end. But Negros, they were impressive in the first quarter. Definitely so, because the starting unit of Coach Junoel has scored four points or more. Cardell with four, Ognatan four, Tanuan four, Ferios with eight big points. Mostly in the shaded area. At ito, ito ginawa ng Negro Slashers. They created a lot of scoring opportunities for their teammates. Unlike the Cebu Gems, na wala yung kanilang offense. Bobby, I know Wainwright has scored back-to-back -back hits, but uh, I'm sure the Negro Slashers were happy during the quarter break. Yes, they have been the most intense. I've seen them in three games. The coaches, the players, even see uh, the owner, Babes Alvarez, I pinapay pa yung kanyang mga player. Now, they did a very good job of weathering this emotional storm of the Cebu Gems here in the first quarter. Now, offensively, notice they'll have four to five passes first before they go in for their shots. Very simple, very basic. Back to you, Sam. Okay, so what Bobby is saying is that it won't be so easy for the Cebu Gems with the yes. outlook of the Slashers here tonight. Alam mo, ito sinabi ni Bobby yan ay emotional storm. I think they have gotten over it. They played one great quarter and that's the first. Here, they are going to settle down. And the Cebu Gems, on the other hand, must find a way to stop those cuts from the weak side. They've got to block off. Masadong maraming puntos ang nakukuha nila. Framo dito sa may shaded area. Emotion and storm. I think uh, Cebu is bringing up the poetic in Mr. <laughs> Yan here, huh? I think we should send him to Cebu more often. Then on the half remaining, 30 to 22. This is the NBA on ABS-CBN. Aggressive move by Juan Tiveras. 30 to 24. Six-point lead by the Negro Slashers. However, the Slashers, if you notice, they're not forcing any issue right now. This is one play wherein they're going to go to Jack Tanuan, and Jack Tanuan will be responsible for spotting that open cover. Juan Tiveras already with seven points. Biggest lead of Negro stood at 13, way back at 18 to 5. We're two minutes into the second quarter. Take a look at the first quarter as we review it. 37% shooting para sa Cebu ang Negros 54 at makikita natin yung steals ng Negros very aggressive 3 against 1 at that's the reason why they've been getting a lot of points and they have held on to that lead 54% by Negros 12 of 22 anytime you shoot 50% uh, 1 for every 2 you're in good hands but the lead has been whittled down to 6 Nueve 33 na lang po ang nalalabi Inside to Ferriols. The man. At the work. And now, Cebu beginning to catch some fire. They're trying to be a little more organized. Pontiveros is now being eyed very closely by Framo. Pontiveros launches a long one. It's a wild shot. What they say, sabi natin, yung patience on their offense. Wala, yung nangyayari niyon. Just going to turn to Pontiveros. He gets the steal. Took it away from Framo, a three-on-one being fashioned. Manigo over to Hontiveros, and Cebu is running! Just a four-point lead now by the Negro Slashers. Negro Slashers, they're doing a great job of maintaining this lead. However, they're still going to go to Jack Tanuan, and Jack must get his points. Cebu has adjusted magnificently, magnificently rather, 
Asperyol stride a dipsy do his version fouled on the way up fast break presented to you by FedEx the world on time you know you get this uh, parang, uh, mundo football feeling you get this idea since the NBA is a home and away concept that there will be dancing in front of Spain tonight should Cebu hang on well I'm sure you make it so on and that on that's a Negros Cagbaholo they're biting their nails as of the moment 8.37 to go, 31.26 tally. By the way, a special good evening to all our colleagues and friends over there at the ABS-CBN Mandawe Radio TV Complex. Ang ganda-ganda ng uh, ABS-CBN dito is a new building, recently uh, blessed and recently inaugurated. Hanuan Looper! Nilo Karanta not doing a good job of boxing out and Jack Hanuan, and it seems that itong... Frontline ng Cebu Champs, nagugulat rin dahil itong frontline naman ng Negro Slashers ang bumubulusok dito sa second quarter. Michael Manigo, setting it up. Nine on the shot block, here's Wainwright. Flips. Will not go, who not snares the rebound. Manigo drops to the deck. Eight minutes to go. Seven point lead by Negros. Again, Negros will try to go to the post. They're gonna try to look for that cutters, pero kailan hindi na bitawan ito sa Jack Tanuan. Nakakatira ito mula sa, wala, sa labas. Just a mga 10 feet out, 10 to 12 feet out. That will not work. Loose ball foul. Could go against Almonte. Atayo ko, atayo, atayo lang! You know, Seb, every time you have movement underneath the floor, and every time you really want to go for that offensive rebound, yan ang nangyayari. Tingnan natin dito, si Almonte, knowing na Hood Nathan will be moving around, push him away. Tonichi Ituri talking to his bench. He just can't coach enough. Not that like, <laughs> there's always something to comment on. Coach's work is never done. Inside, off the cut. Can you see the Modani trying to stop that cut from the weak side, which is the most difficult cut to stop? 19. But in the process, they committed a foul. Ito si Almonte will pick up his second personal foul. Late ang help ni Almonte. Ito, malapit na itong si Maui Willard towards the basket. And he gave him up his second personal foul. What could possibly work against Cebu in the spirit is the fact that they have 14 fouls already. And having 14 fouls doesn't mean that you just foul your opponent. Uh -huh. May pagkakatao na na late ka at saka binigyan mo na lang ng foul. And it will only go to show na yung depensa mo, medyo mahina. You know, there's a wrestling match. Whoever picks up Tanuan. Wayne Wright is on him. The double team on Jack Willar says, let me try. Just let me try. That is a three-point shot by Maui Willar giving them a 10-point lead. A new seven minutes and 23 here in the second quarter. Forcing Tunichi Ituri to utilize another timeout. He does not want to get this out of hand. Might as well nip it in the bud early. 7.20 to go. That's our count. We'll be back in Cebu in just a while. There was a miss by Cebu on the other end, but Jack Tenuang, he was sharp. He has now given Negros a 12-point lead. And that's the biggest lead of the Negros Slashers. Ang Cebu nahihirapan mag-adjust defensively at nahihirapan sila mag-rotate every time nagkakaroon ng double team. And this has given Jack a lot of time to either think of passing the ball or making the shot. Tenuang already half of his norm of 16.8. He has netted 8 already in this game. But you know what, no matter what happens here, you just have to be impressed with what has happened to Cebu. You know, they were in fourth place at the end of the eliminations with only a 10-12 slate. They were behind Soxer Jen at 11-11. They were also behind Negros and Tamao, Danny. Hindi lang yun. Nagupesa itong kopuna ng Cebu Gems at 0-4-7 before they started winning. And it took them a game against Soxer Jen to be able to finally make it into the Southern Conference Finals. So some people, have, uh, experts, including you, you, you have mentioned that Cebu has peaked just about the right time. Well, maganda yung disiplina yung pinapakita nila so far. Pero in this game, medyo hirap sila. And they're just going one-on-one. -on -one. Almonte on the way down. I think the fashion statement today is green do, green hair. Pumasok na rin dito sa kuponan ng Cebu Gems itong si Silver Villafuerte. To be able to find means or a way to stop Jack Tanuan. That has been the dilemma 
of the gems up to this moment as we enter the last five minutes of 48. Blackjack, kabam! Ten points by the big man, and he is unstoppable, Danny. Alam mo itong sinabi ng maraming tao na itong Negro Slashers, pigilin mo si Jack the One because sa kanya sumisentro lahat ng kanilang play. Pinapakita niya ngayon, kaya niya pumuntos at kaya niya pumasa. And that is a very good player in Jack the One na identify niya kung sino yung mga teammates na na libre. In fact, with the one, you get the entire package and look at this, big man even has a rebound. Lead pass into the hands of Nathan, the spin move! Cebu claiming traveling. Nine. Referee Nicolas says there's a foul. And that is on Padilla who has been inserted into the lineup just this second quarter. Watch this anew. Again, the Negros fast break anchored on Hugnatan. The pass coming from Jack Tanuan. Hugnatan gets a foul from Stephen Padilla. He'll go to the free throw line. And it, this is the time we're in kumbaga, the second unit of the Negros Slashers may build their confidence on and they're leading by 12 at the moment and every time their teammates would spot them they have to deliver to be able to bring that confidence back that is such a valuable point when you consider that the basketball game is 48 minutes somebody has to hold on to the fort maintain it while the main artillery tries to catch its breath like in this case jack tenuan has already been given a rest we have referee Nicolas making another call well, this time the foul will be on Hugnat and his second personal foul on a good box out by Whitey Almonte. That is the second team foul of the Slashers vis-a-vis -vis the five of Cebu. Alamosev, it's highly noticeable that this si coach Donici Turi in this first half has rotated his men, you know, a lot of times trying to find out the right combination. And that will work. Montalvo with his first basket. Cardell up against Monty Barris. That's a great matchup. And Cardell driving hard and delivering. He has six. Again, no communication on the part of the Cebu Gems. Normally, in the previous game, makikita natin na nag-uusap sila and then tumatawag sila ng help. But this time, I think they're really feeling the pressure and nagiging one pass, one shot lang itong Cebu Gems. And here comes Wallar, that is his masterpiece, the steal. You played with Cardell on the national team. Karuche, he hasn't lost that explosive move to the basket, Danny. Yung kanyang first step, and it's normally through the baseline. Kasi alam natin, itong si Cardell, malakas yung tumalon. Trying to go two in a row. That long shot did not work. New shot block, entering the last four minutes and ten of the second period. Perioles blocked before the shot. I mean, Again, it's a foul on Stephen Padilla. The second personal foul in Cebu already in the penalty. In case you just joined our coverage here today on NBA Wednesday, Pampanga earlier winning against Manila, 79 to 78. The tie of that series of two games in me, so that series will have one more game in uh, Loyola before it goes back to Pampanga on Sunday. Malaking laro yung pinakita ng Pampanga Dragons of stealing one from Manila. Nobody home! Yeah! 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 Cebu needing an adrenaline rush. Maybe that could start them all. Listen to the chant for defense. Ferriols. That won't climb in, but he's unstoppable off the boards. He gets another serving. He is so strong inside. And it was John Ferriols, all business here in the first half. I believe he already has about 10 points. Yes, 12, Danny. And you're not far off in that estimate because. But it's a tourist man because it's like they're just watching Cebu. And they gave it to John Ferriols. Si John Ferriols got one of the offensive rebounds. He's got a score. In the meantime, before that attempt, we have the foul. Pugnatan <laughs> picks up his third. Alamosev, ito yung play ng Negro Slashers. Titignan natin dito sa slow-mo. They're gonna go down to Jack Tanuan. And notice the double team kung saan manggagaling. Makikita natin. Ayan na yung cut ni Erwin Framo at saka, ayun, yung layup. In the meantime, Padilla with his first crack at the basket, cutting down the lead to 10. But there was a storm 
that Cebu sent Negros' way, but that has been weathered. Negros seems to be in good stead. In the meantime, another foul. It will be shooting time. Montalbo picks up his first, the seventh, on the gems. At papasok na ito si Jerry Haka. Papalitan si Hugnatan at um, ito yung mga bagong players ng Negros last year sa sabi natin. They've got to build their confidence on. Here in the second quarter, the total second chance points ang Negros with 10 and Cebu with 2. And you've got to credit the rebounding effort of the Negros Lashers. Underscore Feriol Stanuan, huh? I think even in our discussions in first five, we've always uh, earmarked that front line of the uh, Negro Slashers as one of the best, if not the best, in the NBA. By the way, Lim is in the ball game. And uh, when Framuiz uh, has a good breakfast, he can get more points from him as well. Down to three minutes, first half. Ball will stay with the gems. This has gone so swiftly. There's Montalbo across the timeline. Big man on the dribble. Good God. No. But he'll get a foul and a trip to the free throw line. Second on John Firyal's. Fourth on the team. And we're going to take a break here as the Negro Slashers require a timeout. 2.51 to go. We'll be right back. Ever notice that everything you and I want to do right now, aside from eat Skyflakes and Skyflakes nothing left, is seen in our beautiful commercials. <laughs> like that cute little kid who was taking a bath. That is exactly the feeling, aside from the Palabog, of course, of Jollibee, that I want to have right now. But a basketball game is not a basketball game if you don't have to Even a crowd never Ah, oh, oh, but it's better when you're in the crowd. Lim, drop, pass, that'll work. And a foul to boot. Haka on the firing end. And the foul is on Montalbo, number two. Ipinasok ito si John Lim. At makikita natin dito sa replay, it's a very good move on the part of um, Coach Drew Noel to replace first. Itong si Ken Salvador, ipinasok si John Lim. John Lim can serve as a spark plug any time of the game, whether they're down or they're up. At kinapakita niya, yung ability niya to dish off to Jerry Haka and again at this point masasabi rin natin na the bench has scored already for the Negro Slashers what they're trying to do now is st stabilize the defensive game naman that's work I'm not why is that that's it the foul is on Leo Batog the fifth on the team first on Batog Bonus Padilla took care of that basket Padilla. and Padilla already with four across his name. Could be more with a six shot. Well, on the other hand, the man, itong Cebu Gems are quick to identify that there's a mismatch between Padilla and John Lim. That's why they want to go to Stephen Padilla. Haka standing tall and proud of that rebound. Haka standing about 6'3". one traveling. Traveling! Bola mababalik dito sa Cebu Gems. 49 to 38, 2 minutes and 15 to go here in the second quarter. You know, June Noel, I like his Yoda-like attitude to the game. He's like the sensei, the master. He's cool, he's taking a drink. His team is in front, 49-38. Oh, great pass to Aka. And Negros is killing Cebu by running. That was provided by John Lim. Ito si John Lim will be able to give Maui Willar a lot of time to rest and be fresh for the third quarter. At ang dami niya nakikreate na opportunities. And ito yung sinasabi natin, every time you're quick, you move without the ball, your teammates will always spot you and you can take your time in making the basket. That last foul was on Wainwright, Daddy, uh, Danny. And in the meantime, we have Haka on the line. Jun Noel telling Haka, bend your knees, son. Yes, kulang sa bending of the knees, although that pumasok yan. Kasi sa tuhot nang gagaling yung buwelo ng free throw eh. Ito si Jun Noel getting a lot of premium from the bench of the Negro Slashers by exposing them very early to the ballgame. Wainwright, 
by Sokol on your jumper. That is the spot that Wayne Wright adores. He has 12 points in this game. A minute and 40 remaining. We're still in the first half. We're in the second quarter to be specific. Tanuan snaps. The big man is hot. May ini talaga ito si Jack Tanuan. In fact, ito si John Montalvo. Sinabi niya, sige, tumira ka. Sabi ni Jack. O sige na nga, pupapasok ito. Oh, eh. Abinito ni Chituri, I'm taking a look at his expression now. He can't do anything about it. Jack Tanuan is going to go and shield up the tie of the referee. Let's see Jerry Hawkins in the beginning of the first personal foul. Sending Robert Green out to the free throw line. Negros Danny has 16 fouls while Cebu already sending uh, their opponents into the two free throw penalty. They have 19 fouls. Well, I said, with 1 minute and 22 seconds to go in the second quarter, Negros has done a magnificent job of maintaining this lead. That's 12 points. In the meantime, Wayne Wright taking care of the front end of the uh, one and one Good line by Wainwright. And it drops to 10. They guess the 13, as we mentioned. It's been a Negros game so far in this first half. Minute and ten. There he goes. There's that body contact. The first move. Such a joy to watch. Kita mo naman yung balikat ni John Ferreros. Binababa ni mo na para makita ko sa pupunta si Richard Kalyao. Watch this. This is how do you do? You, you've mastered this art. Maganda to kasi kaliwete yata si John Ferreros. And Richard Kalyao must be able to know already that si John Ferreros PP hit towards his strong side, and he he can hit that. Baseline jumper na isang kamay. Kaya-kaya ni John Ferriol siyan. As manifested in that last play, referee Nicolas approaching the scores table. Ano eight, Wally? As much man like Alda. Wally, the Negros Lashers, number eight, Jerry Haka for that scores man like Alda. Well, Jerry Haka has been warned for attempted and sports man like Hun. A minute, a minute and five. Yes, Danny. At this point, it is also good to notice that the rotation of Juno Well with 58 seconds to go and back to his strong fight. Padilla can't get it to crawl in. Haka half a step ahead, lost control, no need to rush. Defense of Cebu already assembled. They have the numbers. And Cartel might use a timeout here. Okay, Zion Yan for Negros because they had the advantage. Just Aka couldn't hang on to it. We'll take a break, friends, but return swiftly here in Cebu. Just love, third sheet. Their passion is their Cebu gems, of course, but they're behind by 13, which has matched the biggest lead of Negros. That's why they're not dancing yet. Crowd has been diffused here. By the way, the NBA ABS CBN coverage team would like to thank our homes here in Cebu, Nike Garden Hotel and Allegan Circle Inn. Here's Steele, and Jack Tanua nearly topples over the Gatorade container there. Ambola pobunta dito sa Cebu Gems, and at this point also I'd like to mention as we approach the end of the second quarter, Negros already has 55 points, and if you compare this to Game 4, wherein they only scored 43 at the half, it's a very big, you know, yung umakit ka agad to, laki ng kanilang improvement in terms of scoring, at malaking bagay talaga yung mga pasok nila Jack Tanua. Triple team on Wainwright. And the big men scoring off early really helped them in that regard. Cardell, straight and true! Negros is determined, Danny. Oh, at pinapakita nila ngayon. 16 points ang kalamangin itong Negros Lashers. And we've got a foul. And a foul on Haka. Maui Willar is asking me if it was a foul. Yes, Maui, it was a foul. <laughs> The Solpicher Kids 4-4 four four basketball comes your way when halftime swings around. We'll take a look also at the Southern uh, Conference best plays in our Adidas halftime action. Lead now is uh, 15, 58-43. Earlier it was largest, as Danny mentioned, at 16. Final second. 
Long pitch, catch and shoot situation. That's it. 24 minutes of action have been played and at the end of those minutes we find the Negro Smashers fighting the odds ahead 58 to 44. Will the series be sent back to Bacolod where Negros has the advantage? That remains to be seen in the next 24 minutes. But first things first, we'll have the Sulpicio Kitty Basketball coming your way aside from the best plays of the Southern Conference in just a short while. Actually, that 60% was the field goal percentage of the Cebu Gems in the previous game. 47 lang para sa Cebu in terms of rebounds, 24. Ang Negros, 9 of which get coming off the offensive boards. And in free throws, 50% for the Slashers. Ang Cebu Matasa, 11 out of 13. Many of this crowd, you can sense that you can actually touch it. They're waiting for the explosion. Yes, They're waiting for the big kapam. And as you take a look at the steals, I'm not surprised with the steals of Negros. I know the hustle stat na to, itong steals. Ang Negros, anim, ang Cebu, three. And Maui Wela, who has been averaging eight steals a game, only had two steals in the previous games. Pero in this game alone, meron ng sang tatlo. At alam mo, Seb, dito sa first half, no, if we're gonna really break it down, itong Cebu Gems, they showed a lot of heart. But apparently, overconfidence, I would say, brought them in and um, itong lack of communication uh, no teamwork they were not looking for the extra passes and um, itong Negros they were very quick to identify the open man Jerry Hacker getting blocked right now Cardell was open on the other end but let's go to your roommate Alex Santos who has his quick report I want to find out what they talked about the Cebu Gems Alex well said kanina alam mo napansin ni Coach Ituri kanina there's really a sloppy sequence midway through the period that they could not get the lead dito sa Negro Slashers at ang sabi nga ni Kituri you have to lessen your turnovers by keeping the ball take care of the ball during possession at sabi niya pinatanggal niya yung kanyang mga itong mga green sa kanyang lang mga ulo pinatanggal dahil sabi niya nakakahiya kayo gusto natin manalo kailan magtrabaho kayo back to you Sam biglang <laughs> naging barbero si Tonichi Ituri pinatanggal lahat ng green pero talagang kailangan nila iwasan yung turnovers they had 12 turnovers as against only 5 by the Negro Slashers Good call. Magandang tawag yan. No matter what Manigo does, that's, that's going to go to Negros because he touched a gem last. And that was a dangerous cross-court pass thrown by Robert Doat. 58-46 po ang ating bilang. Kung uh, kabubukas nyo lang po ng inyong uh, TV at napapunta kayo sa amin, maraming salamat po. Thank you for joining us here tonight. Kapanga winning earlier against Manila, 79-78. Oh, great shot. You know, Seb, you've got to appreciate the spacing that you can see the Negro Slashers. Every time there's a double team, they're quick to identify and move the ball around. And when they move the ball around, they find their open spot. And this is si John Perios having a heyday underneath that basket. I really think it is the Sinigang Nasugbo kanina that is doing Perios. Oh my God, I have never seen Cebu play this way here at home. Very what? sloppy ang kanilang offense that you can see here at the third quarter. Cebu has been noted for a third quarter collapse pero hindi pa rin nila makakailan na nanalo sila because they had great third quarter runs in their previous um, one games against the Negro Slashers. Bobby, you were inside the Slashers locker room. They were apparently satisfied on the Veros with a stop. Yes, uh, Negros played their perfect half here in game five. They did everything right. Fast breaks, scoring on the bench, scoring off the starters, and most importantly, controlling the crowd. Now here, we we know, we know Cebu is going to make the run. So they should weather the second wave of the Cebu storm here to bring it back to Bacolod. Back to yourself. Uh, Bobby was too no well satisfied. We'll get the answer from Bobby later. I love when it was a June Noel. Doesn't so, show so much emotion. What gives? There's a foul. Please. Isaac. And Jonathan Cardell will be called for his third first. Now, up, up, up. from behind. And there's an early uh, piece of debris being thrown onto the court. Totally unnecessary if you ask me about it. 60-48. There's a foul that will set Maniga to the line. That's going to be number two on Maui Villar. Danny, I, I, I have to say this. The Cebuanos take each foul personally, Danny. Each, <laughs> each call that goes against them, it is on them. It's not on the gems. Alam mo itong crowd na to, they have to get into the game to be able to help 
their team make a rally. Ang nangyayari dito is that um, ibang gems naman, sometimes they cannot play with the crowd. Kailangan ah, nila ma-execute ah, muna yung laro ah. nila and then just let it flow, let the crowd be behind them. Ang Negro so far has been successful shutting off the crowd for a long period of time. And ito lang, dito lang sa third quarter, nag-uumpisa ulit itong crowd ng Cebu. Kenichi Ituri hoping that this juggernaut of Negros will end right now. Manigo straight and two. Straight and true, that is. Ten point game, 60 to 50. Negros denied downstairs. Biggest leads, turn at 16. Shot clock at 17. Take another look at this one. Nakuha niya si Nilo Carante, but Nilo Carante passing the ball away. Pero ang bola mananatili dito sa Negros Lashers. Outside to John Ferrios. That's in the play here. Good look. But just didn't drop in. Do what? They have to give it up. Ontiveros, proud, bristling with excitement in anticipate offensive foul. But that's a, that was a push, Sam. That was a push against Erwin Framo. Oh, did they go even against Framo? It looked like an offensive foul, the signal of the referee. Anyway, that will stay, Danny, as you call it. Framo and Ontiveros are wrestling with each other. Spin around, air ball. Ferriols pops out of trouble. Last match by Bravo, it'll go the other way. Referee Shilo Petalio on top of that last play. Nakita niya sa corner of her eyes because she had her back to the play. Pero mundi ka na itong Cebu Gems. Another fast break by the Negro Slashers. Ang bilis bumito itong si John Perez. And Mike Manigo challenging that pass, stopping it off Erwin Framos' hand. Eight and a half to go, 10 point game. This ball foul against Hukata. That's number four on Hukata. The discussion of the Negro Slashers earlier during the, the day, Danny, because they share the same hotel as we do, was not to let the officiating distract them. Was it? Just concentrate on the game, but uh, you know, emotions can uh, vary as the game goes along. Yeah, so far, they've managed a good job of again maintaining the speed. However, it's being threatened at the moment. It circles away. Timeout requested by the Negro Slashers. Maybe rightfully so. 8.28 to go. Stay with us. This is the NBA. Okay, that's what they think. <laughs> City. And that is where it will end because Negros enjoying the home court advantage. 10 point game, 822 remaining. Sam Sarmenta, Danny Francisco, Mabian, and Alexander taking care of your game here. The fifth of this series to determine who will represent the South in the NBA National Finals. Perriols managing to control it. Excellent control. Kita mo naman ito si John Perlios, natapit na yung bola sa kanya ni Nilo Caralde, but still managed to get the ball up, a 12 point lead by the Negro Slasher, 62 to 50. Perlios so far, the only producer for the Negro Slasher, he has 19 of the game. Overshooting, Ramos, Catmers win. Walang pumitake up ng offensive rebound para si Cebu Gems, ang Cebu Gems, their offense basically is a one pass, one shoot. Offense, ang nangyayari. If they want to get back into this ball game, what they have to do is they run their offense by calling a play. Ang nangyayari, nakakaroon lang ng isolation play. Ang buti na lamang, ito yung offensive foul ng Jack Tanuan. That's what happened in the first game. By the way, Norman Gonzalez emerging as best player. And uh, Chuck Reyes was talking about the record uh, offensive rebounds, part and parcel of the victory of Hong Kong. Montalvo missing the first. So that series is tied to a piece. 
So they did best of three now in the series. Oh, they should both coaches have mentioned to their teams, respective teams now. Back to Zaria. This one, 3-1 lead by the Cebu Gems. On the threshold of wrapping up the Southern Conference, but down at this moment, 62 to 50. Time remaining. There on your screens, 7 and 20. Ognatan. Here's Blackjack, who has been hot in this game. Draws the double coverage, but a spin around is an overshooting effort. Under the basket, the shot gun is gone. The shot did not hit the rim in the first place. That of Kanoa. 23 second violation. The Negros bench asking for a possible foul. Carrios is doing exactly that. June Noel is also doing that, trying to ask the fact that the ball hit the rim. I don't think so. And Diego lefty. Out to ten. Well, what Cebu is trying to do right now, they're trying to ignite Mike Manigo's game. And we'll see that there's a foul on Mike Manigo. Oh, his first. You know, they tried to get Mike Manigo to score and try to get his game back. in the last time yes. around, or in, he was named the best player in the ballgame, 26 points. Outscoring the whole bench of the Negro Slashers. And as he told Alex Santos in that post-game interview, I don't want to go back to Bacolod. Do what with the near still. Cartel recovers. The pitch. Montalvo. Pramo. There's a battle at the mid-court line. Could have been back in violation. And Erwin Pramo will call this timeout. Let us, let us, let us, let us. There's a bola. I tell you why she couldn't make that call. She was out of position. In the meantime, cease fire. It's warming up here. We are in the middle of a sea of humanity, and in that sea, Jonathan Cardell with a great shot to increase the lead to 12 as we approach the midway point of this third quarter. Skyflakes. Skyflakes. And here, Patino and Jonathan Cardell as the shot clock was expiring on them. Yes. That is what seems to be the Great Wall of China that cannot be cracked by the Cebu Gems as of now. Well, keep oh, on the yes! Man. Diyan mo makikita talaga yung communication. Yung processing thought nitong Negro Slashers nakikita nila that they're giving a lot of confidence towards their teammates. They're clamping down in the shaded era because they know that the Cebu Gems would like to attack the basket and hopefully get higher percentage shots and bring this lead down. However, it's very tight right now and every time they get the ball, it's a lot of and they lose it, they go for the fast break. Look at this magnificent play. Kota for the day of El Willar. Why the turnovers really burning Zubu? And Danny, they're playing very fast. They're very, they're playing very tight. In fact, sir, but, uh, Mike Manigo shouldn't be playing underneath the basket. Should be the big guys of the Zubu Gems and the Arit. Every time he catches himself underneath the basket, he has to go up against Goliath. And there's a great cut by Aaron Bravo. Because it's a bit lackluster on offense. It's not that much defensively on Cebu. It's a bit of a bad thing. It's a bit of a bad thing. It's a bit of a bad thing. But not yet. Richard Bellow for defensive rebound. And there's a push. 18. 4.51 to go, Danny. It's 16 points anew. A repeat of the biggest lead. They've established it three times in this game. Watch this anew. Ito yung push ni Leo Batog laban kay Richard Callao. Cebu at this point should try to bring that lead down point for point. Hindi, hindi nila iisipan kailangan na sampung puntos may babalik agad nila yung sampung puntos nila to cut that lead down. Kailangan point for point. We're still here in the third quarter, 4 minutes and 51 left. Callao hitting his first free throw. Also his second. 16 to 54, still a 14 point lead by the Negro Slashers. 4 minutes and 47 to go here in the third. Turn over, the ball will go to the Cebu Gem side. In terms of turnovers, Cebu already with a collection of uh, 16. Negros with 10. 
before impact happened here in the third quarter kasi bossy na sila nung uh, end of the first half Maaaring nagpapadi rin ito sa Blue Gems uh, na magbaba yung kalaban ng itong Negro Slashers sinabi nga natin ang Negro Slashers they're really playing like a well-oiled machine they're maintaining that lead and every time sa Blue Gems threatens itong Negros mabilis ang kanilang pagsagot are down with four personal fouls alam mo ang isip ang key na nagawa ni Negros hindi pumapasok yung game hindi walang impact yung game ni Hontiveros ni Wayne Red sa proceedings as of now oo at ang on their side naman despite the 14 ah despite the 14 I think that itong Negros they're just letting the game throw freely no among them at ang hindi sila nagbabadali hindi nila pinipilit ang kanila mga tira yan makikita natin libre si Batog pero yung pinasa niya dito muli sa labas which is a stark contrast to the way they played the last game where in they lost by 20 cartel oh yes 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 mainit itong si Johnny Del Cartel dalawang 3 point shots na para sa kanya Manigo 71-56 Alex Akin said, that is a clean block. That was on the way up. Downstairs. Prom is doing a good job of controlling the ball club. But he decides to take a crack at it at the last moment. It'll stay with Negros. Okay, I'm going to ball. I don't want to get to the gems. What they're thinking of right now is trying to run off that rebound. But they've got to control the ball first. Negros doing a great job of rotating the ball. And taking it easy, say. That will not work. Tristan. Montiveros trying to accelerate. Manigo up and in. 71-58 tally. 13 points gained by the Negro Slashers. Bravo. On the drive, he Well, he thought that he could go for the steal. One step late, na siya. Is he hurting, Danny? Parang yah, he hurt himself. Ayo, no. Hobbling back to the bench. He's nursing a groin injury at um, napakasakit po niyan. Great alley you pass! To Leo Bato coming from Maui Rolan. Ito yung laro talaga ng Negro set na nakikita natin ngayon. If you've already chosen a Milo best play, change it. I think that's <laughs> going to be a candidate. Manigo, yes! That's going to be number three. I know Manigo has done wonders for this team. He's taken this team on his shoulders, but is it going to be enough here tonight? And he has to get the support of his teammates so far. They know that Mike Manigo is hot. They're trying to get him to score a lot of points. However, his other teammates are very pretty badly in terms of defense. So Manigo, all of his points in this third quarter, he got 11 for him, shooting off the third personal foul of Wellar. We're down to the last. In fact, less than three minutes here in the third. Now, Negros will make a big mistake if they begin to play the clock, Danny. Promo, however, says, take that, Seb Sarmenta, I'm <laughs> driving in. 75 to 61, 14 point lead by Negros. You know what, Negros? Sinabi nga natin, they will not fall into that false sense of security against the Cebu Gem squad. Itong Negros kasi, pakakauna. Usually, sa lead maintenance, may kagalingan din naman itong bumbo ng Negro. At hindi na nila pinipilis mo ito sa mga 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 magbaba ng bola. Kasi alam nila, ito lang ang tanging point guard ng Negro. Kaya ang nangyayari, kinahayaan na rin nila si Jack na gawa ng magbaba ng bola. Kaya parang mirror image ito nga na nangyayari nung nakaraan yung manalo itong Cebu Gems. Kung hindi may baba ng mga point guards ng Cebu, ang pinakawupa yung mga malalaki sila, John Montalvo. At yan ang ginagawa ng Negro sa nyo. Very quiet, Daniel. Shout out to Kasi Mike Manigo lang ang talagang main score para sa kanilang kukunan. How true, Mr. Danny Francisco, because the only people that have scored are Calgao, 
as well as Manigo and the other men, the one you mentioned, Juan Riveros, in this third period. That was a tough call to make for referee Nicolás because he uh, seemed to be out of position there. And no one. Well, are trying to sneak in and snap it away. No success. Beat is 12. They have to cut it down to less than 10. We're talking of Sigul. If they want to make a serious run here, going into the fourth. Manigo. Montalvo. He'll go back. No, I speak too soon. It's Caldeau's full. Three seconds of the shot clock. Come on. A whistle. That'll count, no question about it. Simultaneous, simultaneous. Watch this. <laughs> Both players are jockeying for position, actually, because the wrestling match. Both players getting slapped technicals. That is the NBA Tag Team Championship, Danny. Look at that serious look of these two. But the, there's no question, the basketball can't. I don't think Nedros has to be worried about it. Well, both technicals will scratch each other off. Yes. Kung kaya pumasok, inout nila, it's not a three-point play. Almonte, I think the referees are calling the hand-checking call consistently tonight. And, you know, these referees have already mentioned to the head coach and to the captain boss, we're going to call it very tight, especially the hand check set. Even before this series started, we're going to every game yet. This is our mood tonight. This is what we're going to do. This is the game plan of the officials. Minute 28, 75, 65. Framo is being aggressive, but that will not drop in. Almonte is there to block the rebound. Manigo in charge of ball distribution. Why am I not surprised they're going to this man? But Callao has been a hero. He has provided some impact points. He has six in the third quarter. We don't normally see Jack Danuan doubling on Gordon Monteveros. I didn't find any reason why he had to double up, leaving Richard Callao free. He didn't expect Callao to drive. Illegal, good call. <laughs> I like the way Kirante is trying to pursue his point. He was just so concerned about Jack Danuan that he failed to check on his man and that's Leo Bakot. The joke of his life, as of the moment, Rilari was wondering why he was called for illegal defense when he, they had the ball. I said, si Kirante, number 15, then. <laughs> and that sorted out. Eight point game from a high of 16. Less than 50 seconds. Turn over. Negros must be able to settle down. Actually, Mario Miller thought that the Nasikartel will pop out instead of going inside using that curl. Miss Reed, huh? Brown tried to get into the act. A lead of six will make this ball game work a little differently. Manigo trying to rest for a moment. He must have been brushed along the eye area. This is not nice. Mato Olnes, well, yeah, it's what it is. No official timeout has been made. Well, si Mike Manigo, papalitan ni itong si Stephen Padilla. Last 32 seconds of the third quarter. Mission of Mont Fernandez trying the advantage of being 6-4 then. And we have a very wet portion of the floor right in front of us. Yeah. 
75-67, eight-point game with 32 seconds remaining in the third. Well, you know, in the second quarter, despite the dozen point lead by the Negro Slashers, they the Bannon Cebu Gems to just six points. Now they've got a chance to bring it down to six again. Danny, we've got a timeout. Maybe this is the best timeout so far of this game. We'll be back. Emotions, we've got it. Tension, we've got it as well. Pressure, well, as Bill Velasco would say, that's something you put in the tires uh, as uh, <laughs> they go to drive parking. But this is a great one, no question about it. Antiveros, good blow! Steal! No basket, no basket! He was on the line. Oh, can you imagine if that was counted? Just a six point lead right now, 75 to 69. And Cebu applying the pressure now on the Negra Slasher squad. They need a press break here. Still in the backward, big man on the dribble. Manages to get across despite the plodding move. Shot clock is off. Oh, Alan Sassan. Is this Alan Sassan? Oh, yes, he simply crumbles. Eight straight points. But we've covered from for the last two years, Danny. He's a tough hombre, not easily ruffled. Well, if you look at the penalty, foul Leon, then you will have to see the penalty. That will not work. Long one. There is going to be a fourth quarter. There is going to be great action. There is going to be suspense. We will need 12 more minutes to find out how long this series will be. Stay with us. You know when this season is over, I'm going to line up the greatest hits. And it should include uh, Shalala, YMCA. And before we get into a musical rendition here, this is the t Rock family. They are our j, j family of the day. Romeo, Arli, Cherina. And when you watch the NBA Live, you have a chance to become our Johnson & Johnson family of the day. And talking about Johnson & Johnson, Parano, hey Alex Santos. Yes, alam mo, we have an injury report uh, dito kay Michael Manico. Well, meron lang mong siyang slight uh, laceration sa kanyang eyelid after that accidental uh, tamaan ni Erwin Pramo ng Echo. Well, dito naman sa Cebu Gems, uh, kanilang plano for this fourth quarter. Well, ang gusto naman ni Coach Tunichi Ituri, ibalik nila yung kanilang attack mode. Meaning, kailangan nilang dumerecho, attack, 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 para makakuha ng puntos, para magiging hindi naman masyado may ibit sila dito sa opensa ng uh, Negro Santos. Sir? Thanks a lot, Alex. At, uh, Danny, your outlook for this fourth quarter with the way the game has been played so far. Well, right now, we can say that it's a good gems. Ang momentum na sa kanila, si Jack Nguyen, ang katawag ng isang foul, his third personal foul. But you, let us not fail to mention the Negro Slashers. I was just about to say that Jack Nguyen has this way of just silencing that crowd with a turnaround jumper in the previous play. Itong si Tanuan is 7 out of 12, ang kanyang field goal, 3 out of 6 ang kanyang free throws. Malaking bagay talaga ang having a better in it, sir, but at the same time, itong si Boom. But the better sent it to Callao, who was hot in the third period. There's a lot of bustle inside. We will win out. It'll stay with Cebu. But if you can't get Cebu in the middle, you can't get the offensive rebound. You can't get the offensive during the first half at the Negro Slashers. They have to do a job now of boxing out on their men. I don't know if they're going to get the ball back. Bobby Yan has a flash report from the bench of the Slashers. Bobby? Yes, I'll answer your question. Uh, Can you tell who's very satisfied to do well? Uh, in fact, in halftime in this, uh, this timeout, uh, he doesn't say much, no? He trusts his players. It's very important here. They don't trust us to translate into confidence. 
especially in a hostile place like Cebu. Let's see if they can maintain all the good stuff and take game five here in Cebu. I know you don't mean that, hostile. You loved it here, my friend. Hostile in terms of if you're an Ego Slasher. On the Meadows, off, off, and away! That's the second time of Congo on the Meadows. What he's trying to do is trying to get the crowd back. And Negro Slashers, come on, they have to be careful about those passes. The lead has been trimmed down to six. IS with 16. Two minutes into the final period. Manuan. Not this time, not this trick. Come up, hanging for it. It'll go out. It'll go to Cebu. A crisis moment for Junior Well and Ronald Gwynn apart. And in this is the second, as you mentioned. Felix the world on time. There was a lot of bleeding and the Negro Slashers are going on to their veteran Jack Dalou and Stephen Pavilia. Oh! What a game! Kalia with eight points! And Negros is not an option by Professor Time and Buzzer! Listen to this crowd roar! We'll be back after this! Lest everyone or anyone forget. Of course, Skyflakes and Skyflakes are <laughs> not Michel Kui, you have a great sense of timing. timing. I'm about, about to say something about the Cipuanos. Lest anyone forget, the Cipuanos are great singers. The Pinapata yung audio and yung kanta ng BSD in the company. Wala problema si Cipuano. Kay mataas o kay mababa. Pero dani may problema ang Negros. Ang Negros, what they have to do? They've got to settle down on the long offense. Ito. Hanapin nila yung open man, Jan Ferreos, back into the ball game, Flamos, and Alem. That's You're right, points. Danny. You're absolutely right. And that's what they needed, like a good shower up there. DK Garden Hotel, elegant circle in, bagang salamat din. Padilla! Matok flying, throwing all caution to the wind. Si Pato, gano'n walang... Ay, hindi na tawag ng play ito si Stephen Padilla, nakawala siya sa tao niya. Pero nakasalubong naman niya, ito si John Ferreos at saka si Jack Tanuan. Negros uh, getting some dividends after that timeout. Here we are with that hand check, that's a consistent call here tonight. Eight forty-three remaining in the fourth. Manigo is in, he's limping just a tad. Dr. Alex Santos was talking about laceration. We'll check on the eyelid area of uh, Maniego in a short while. Blackjack fakes a shot. Carriols. Is it traveling? Yes. Traveling at Tinawag. Magandang coverage on the part of Nilo Carante. But ibinabalik na ng Negros ang play nila. Pakita lang natin dito yung traveling violation kay John Ferreos. Ibinilik nila yung play nila wherein it's Jack Tanuan from the outside, John Ferreos inside. They have been successful. Nakashoot itong si Erwin Pramo off that cut. Pero the previous play, traveling ang tinawag. Monteveros! Outside to Dandan. Aliao. Oh, not on this trip. Negros cannot believe the call. Inside. Well, at this point, the Don Negros Slashers cannot afford to think about the calls made by the referee. The Calibre Sicarante. If they're not going to make any changes in the call, seldom na mangyari yan, seldom oh, nagpapalit oh. ang tawag itong mga referees. They have to be aware kung nasa yung tawag nila. They cannot just complain. Kasi, what is also part of the ache is the fact that a huge lead has disappeared, oh, Danny. Oh. Nawawala yung kanilang oh, compo oh. composure. And you begin to see every nook and cranny, everything that's wrong with the officiating. Let's see how Negros survives, or will they? Well, itong Negros, they're crumbling right now. Seven minutes and 55 
is still a long way to go. They've got to bring in Maui Velar to settle things for the Negro Slasher squad. Good point, Danny. And he's on the scorer's table right now. Dun Dun! Yes! 79 to 77. They've got to bring in Maui Velar to Negro Slashers. Lead an avalanche of points coming from the Cebu Gems. I don't stay with Negros. <laughs> Rob Duat was trying to be like the cat who swallowed the canary, trying to hide from the scene of the crime. Shot clock at 13, clock at 13 as announced. Ferriol is trying to guard some space. One thing Cebu is doing well in the second half is they're going toe-to-toe -to -toe in the rebounding department. Compared to the first half, they were allowing Ferios to get away, Danny. But at the same time, they've got to be wary of Batog. Take a look at this miss by Ferios, but Batog was way on top of everyone. But the Veros will give his third foul. And don't stay with Negros. <laughs> Rob what was trying to. Be like the cat who swallowed the canary, trying to hide from the scene of the crime. Shot clock, 13 Shot clock at 13 as announced. Ferriol's trying to guard some space. One thing Cebu is doing well in the second half is they're going toe to toe in the rebounding department. Compared to the first half, they were allowing Ferriol to get away, Danny. But at the same time, they've got to be wary of Batog. Take a look at this miss by Ferios, but Batog was way on top of everyone. Monteveros will give his third foul. Time down to 7 and 13. Ball pass inside. Blackjack is jammed. Framo, hard at work. Plenty of time to shot up Ferios. He wanted to slam it, but he is blocked. Is there a foul before the shot? No basket. According to Sheila Pitalio. But they're calling that foul. You can Ferios Mula, no? Against Mirandi, yes. Could have been easy two points. Oh, oh, oh. John Ferios, the choir boy. You know you can put on a First Communion uniform on him and he walks along some private school anywhere in the Philippines and he'll pass for it. He's just going to blend in. So yes, except, indeed. Except for his frame and his side. Yes. And his appetite, I tell you. <laughs> Seven to go. 81-77. For y'all, no question, making a great name for himself here in the NBA. Maniego dueling with Willar. Maniego, wild shot. Here's Framo. And the Cebu forcing up those shots. They've got to go back to where they started. Two points at a time. Outside to Willar. Shot clock at nine. Back to Tinoan. Cut inside by Framo. They'll kick it outside. But I speak too soon. Got Jack. Decided to go for it. Looked like they were going to, they were going to pass off to Willar. And a loose ball foul. Leo Batog committing a third personal foul. One thing you have to understand about Batog is that uh, he has no plans of thinking about tomorrow. He'll just play today. <laughs> Rob Duat not boxing out on Leo Batog. 81-77. Great game, the fifth. Cebu leading the series three games to one. Good end it here today. Bravo with number four. Let's count the team fouls. For Negros, that will be a total of four. On the other hand, Cebu has been assessed three. We're in the jam-packed new Cebu no, 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 City no, no, Coliseum, no, 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 downtown Cebu. Sam Sarmenta, Danny Francisco, Alex Santos, and Bobby Yan. Wayne Wright is back in. Replacing Rob Duat. So big question here for Robert Wainwright is that here in the last six minutes and eight seconds of the game, can he play? He needs, or Cebu needs, the scoring coming from Rob Wainwright, but on defense, he may become a liability. 
Did not spend too much time in the third quarter. Didn't score there. That's a long three. That was a lucky three-point shot. If One. I would say it. <laughs> One point game, Danny. Well, our Ferriols partially blocked, but he is not to be denied. 23 points. Delante will be called for that foul. Offensive foul. Uh huh. Okay, okay. Now that hurts them at this time. Yes. They're making a serious run. Kilante had possession of the ball. Ang ginawa niya para pinalya niya ito si Maui Velar. Velar defusing the noise. And he can make it a four point swing. Boy, they have worried looks. But Velar says, uh, Boss, uh, I'll take care of business here. Don't worry. But he fails on the second free throw. Loose ball. Is Alex Santos going to be still alive after that play? Yes, he is. <laughs> Happened right in front of you, Alex. Huh? Ah, it's okay. Nakatamsa. Oh, nakatamsa. Pantayan mo yung katabi mo si Trixie, ha? Of course, our ABS-CBN production team, aside from the Manila compliment, the... Uh, Group from Cebu helping us out. Boy, he's hot. Twenty-nine points. One point game. And a chance for Cebu now to grab the lead. I'm not kidding. No need to rush actually, Danny. Oliveros! Wait Big three-point shot by Don Don Oliveros giving the Cebu Jams the lead for the very first time, 86 to 84. They believe, they believe in the miracle man, Ferios! Yes! Ibang klase rin na nalaro nito ni John Ferrios. And this is a war, friends. This is not going to be easy. And I can actually hear the cheering in Bacolod and all the parts of Necros Occidental right now. We're tied at 86 all, Sam. First deadline. <laughs> oh, boy. Four minutes and three. From 60 points down. Bravo is a step behind Oliveros. Montalvo trying to set up Dondon. Can't. Traveling. There's a tripping foul, looks like. Nope, it's a tripping foul, yes. John Ferrios will pick up this foul. It's going to be a one in one situation. For Mike Manigo because the Negro Slash is already in the penalty. So go on the other hand, Danny with only three team fouls. Second taste of the lead, yes. Negros already bringing in John Cardell and Ruth Nathan. This is winning time, Danny. Yes. All the troops, all the King's men, and all the King's horses. Perioz. Oh, yes! Cebu cannot believe. He is the biggest start so far for the Cebu Gems. It comes in John Perioz. He's matching up well against Dondon Hontiveros in terms of scoring points. Here. 27. Manigo, 20 by the top. Traveling violation will be called against Mike Manigo. Good call 
made by the referee. And hindi pa iniiyak ng negros yan, Danny. At basang-basa na ni Maui Wilar. Ang ganda ng depensa ni Wilar. Anticipating that spin move. And he travels. Kung sa Bisaya din, kamagkagtudok. Ari lang, kuya. 3 minutes and 5. Tied at 88. Jonadel Gardel. Ferriols. Not this time. Not this trip. Sheila Petalio authoritatively calling up in against Cebu. And against Robert Wainwright. And the DT tour is beyond himself. Cannot believe it. This is a great one. We'll be back. Time out. It's in 53. Yes, we are live from the new Cebu Coliseum here in downtown Cebu. And the series led now by Cebu 3-1. But look at where we are. Yes, she believes. What a game. This is this guy. Sheer talent, Danny. Grabe, nilalaro na siya mga bata dito. And um, the crowd really into this game. Of course, they want the Cebu Gems to win. But Negros really holding on. Going to John Ferriol's. They're trying to make sure that that wet portion in front of the Cebu bench is slick and dry. How much water is actually wasted to Danny during one time out? I don't know, but you know, it's just a little bit. Ah, that's it, that's it. An official's timeout was requested. I think what is happening under the basket. Okay, let's take a break here. Return swiftly to Cebu. We'll be right back. Imperios, 29 points. I am so honored to be here tonight, Danny, just to be a witness to this one together with all of you. Tied at 90, time down to the final two minutes, brought to you by Hope, the largest selling cigarette. And that might be a big one. Well, that foul will be called against Hugnatan. Number five on Hugnatan. Tignan natin dito yung galaw ni John Perios wherein he gave a two-point lead to the Negro Slashers. That was a great turnaround jumper by John Ferriol. And look at this, Cebu with a golden opportunity to move ahead with the clock stuck. Wayne Rock. Fifteen points. Balkovic in the first half. That's his first point here in the second half. Has not played all that many minutes here. In the second set of twenty-four minutes. That will not work. One point lead now by Cebu with time down to a minute and fifty. Pressure cooker. Again, we'll have to find out if Negros will go to their bread and butter play this evening, and that's John Ferrios. But John Ferrios. Should know if the double team comes, he has to pass it off to the open man. Like the shot clock is down to three. Is he aware of it? One. Oh, yes! Superman is at work! 31 points for John Ferriol. And Cebu cannot believe what Ferriol is doing here. We'll be right back.
down to two gentlemen. In the meantime, let's listen first. Now, next time down, play on the defense, stop on team from you. What is it has now boiled down to is two great shooters, two cowboys in the middle of the desert, and one is going to find out who is going to blink. It's been Hontiveros as well as Ferriols. Elenobasi Hontiveros, I believe he's got 34. The score sheet is not enough for what he has done. He's got 34. Yes. Ferriols 31. 31. There are green and white balloons, in fact, in the rafters. Will they fall tonight? That is the giant question. Because when it falls, it means that the Southern Conference has been wrapped up by Cebu. A foul. The junker there will pick up that foul against Duncan Hontiveros. This is what I like the way the referees have made this call tonight. They have been consistent with that hand check. Tama, yung hand check, yung hawakan, akapan. Nakikita nila, no, kahit na nakataas yung isang kamay trying to cover, the other hand is holding on to the opponent. I used to do that very well, Danny. Awa kami yung patalo ng kalaban mo. That's 35 for Dondon Hontiveros. I love it when I swallow my words. I eat my words. I said 16 points earlier, no impact. Suddenly Boom. 35. Welcome to Suspense Theater, 93-92 Cebu. Well, Cebu must play honest defense as instructed by Coach Tonichi Turi. Negros on the other hand, 12 seconds on their shot clock. They've got to look for a very good off offensive set here. They lost it with three seconds to go on their shot clock. Cebu with less than a minute. Monteveros is fouled by Cardell. And a dumbfounded Negros bench is watching the proceedings. Well, Rob Wainwright was sign signaling for a timeout, and there's that foul, the sixth and last foul of Cardell. And maybe at such a big price because he was holding on to his chin. You know, this is just one point. I don't know why Negros is feeling so distraught. Pontiveros, Cabal. Crashing to the floor by his lonesome. And a foul is called against John Montalvo. Okay. He got a good possession. Ayon, 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 ayon. Kaya by his lonesome na siya at that point. Hindi clear yung possession niya. Kasi pagkakuan niya ng rebound, ibabaan niya yung bola, no? But why is the clock still moving? Suddenly they said stop muna. We're going to try and check uh, the clock. What a game by Ferriols and Ontiveros, uh, Danny. Well, I will be shooting. The first is in. He's played here, Danny. He knows what it's like. Just a one-point lead by the Cebu Gems. Negros can tie this ball game with this free throw. You're right. Hey, 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 hey. Jun Noel. And we've got a timeout by Negros. We'll be right back. Okay? Ah, if they shoot, if they make the shot, time out. 
Kunin mo si Tisoy. Ha? Nandito yung bola. Kunin mo si Tisoy. Kunin mo si Tisoy. From you, delay mo na konti. Ha? Okay? Go. Go. Tamo! 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 Dito! Okay? Pag wala, ibigay mo dito. Ibigay mo dito. Then, wait! Boy, boy! Boy, walang pilit! Atang may go goal! Go goal! Kung na walang pilit, walang pilit! Dito tayo! May increase na maganda ni Pinsa nila! May isang time out patawa! May isang time out patawa! constituents here. Well, referee Sheila Pitalio thought or called it as a flagrant one. That's why itong Negros has a chance to go ahead in this game. Tabla tayo. There's the score, the time. Shot clock at 12. Perioles all game long. And Cebu needs a timeout. One of the remaining two. We'll be right back. Rob Wainwright, I want you out here, huh? Rob here, uh, Mike Manigo down, huh? John Montalvo, John Montalvo, better. John Montalvo, John, show you the ball, Rob, you take the ball out. You take the ball out, Rob, huh? Don't, don't down here, okay? Ayan, huh? Okay? Ito ka ba, ito ka, ito ka, huh? Kill to. Oh, Toyajal, ha? Okay. Out, Mike. Out, Mike. Okay. Wala. Eh, better yet, Mike. Ito, ha? Out. Out, Dondon. You get the ball to Dondon. Don, we get you the ball. Bring it here. We isolate, ha? We isolate. Ha? We isolate you, Don. Take your time. Okay. Go, be double team. Go, go, go. Go, go, go. You know, I love the sign language we do when we <laughs> cover basketball. I was just asking our scorers here the situation and Marco Franco has to spoil my uh, spill by coming out with this graphic. Well, both teams have one full timeout each and they're already the penalty. What, what's more important is the inbound play. Here it is, safely on the floor. Contalvo, where am I going? Manigo. Ontiveros. Framo, watching him. Ontiveros fires. Just out. Quillar managed to call a timeout. Yes, I think he managed to call a timeout. We'll be back. Okay, we'll hang on to the air. Negros holding on to a two-point lead. We'll try to listen in. There is absolutely no need for all this throwing. I can't understand it sometimes, no? Commissioner Ramon Fernandez is right in front of us. Surveying the field. I think we should go into the... Um, well, anyway, Negros will have possession, Danny. Well, I felt that um, Dondon, although he was feeling hot all night, forced that shot. He saw the double team coming in, lost his footing, but opted to go for the jumper. We'll try to listen in now to Coach Junoel. You know, Danny, I've been teaching communications for the last 18 years. And it has never ceased to amaze me. And I have what I call the theory of intense communication. In a timeout, how much can be brought out <laughs> with 20 people talking at the same time? And how can five players on the court know what to do after that timeout? 40, 
four, oh, 14.7 seconds. I'm looking at the wrong uh, timepiece. Negros can hold on to the ball. We'll see if they're going to give up that foul. Yes. Yes, Cebu does. Stop the clock. No, why not? That's going to be one in one for Maui Villar. Now it's the turn of Cebu to be distraught. It's just a two point lead. Oh, pero importante. May pasok ni Maui Velar itong dalawang free throws niya. It's a one in one situation. It's not two free throws. Makes his first. Three point three by Negros. Crowd diffused. They were and kicking but they've been taken out 1-0 98 to 94 and the gems will utilize their last time out 13.1 seconds we'll try to check in on coach Tonichi Ituri <laughs> We get the three point shot, guys. Let's try to let's try to deny. They get the ball, we foul, huh? If we make the three point shot, huh? Now if we don't make it, guys, let's play. Let's try to the foul now. Okay, ah, okay, 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 out, Mike. Ade, better than Mike, out, don't turn out. Now look for him, ah, oh yeah. Danny, I think two things are haunting Cebu and it's faithful. One, the fact that they couldn't win it here tonight, although there's still time. Second, the specter of having to go back to Bacolod. Yes, and um, Coach Onichi Uturi wants a big three-point shot. Ego fires. Close at the front court, and I told you, it's not yet over. One but point lead. Foul. And there's that foul given by Mike Manigo. Remember, just a one point lead by Negros. Three points! 98 97. A quick foul. There's that big three point basket by Mike Manigo. Straight and true. Eight seconds to go in the game. No timeouts left for the Cebu Jets. And also for the Negros Lassers. Very crucial free throws. Wellar with nerves of steel. Second. In the bag. No more timeouts. Manigo. And it looks like Yes Douglas will move To fight for another day And the series is extended 100 to 97 There will be no balloons Unleashed No trophies handed out And this will be a victory for Douglas That has made the series 3 to 2 We'll be right back